All right, let's take a look at using Refine Edge on People. In this document, under Select, Load Selection, I have saved a selection of the model that I did with the Quick Selection tool. So the only channel in here is Model, and I'll click OK. And if I go to Select, Refine Edge, the last time I was using this, I left it on black, but the normal setting is on white. Sadly, she was shot on a white background, so viewing white on white won't really tell you what you need to clean up in your selection area. If you're curious, I'd love to show this. It reminds me of the early iPod commercials. The on black and white will show just a channel, so just a silhouette, and that's a great thing that you can use in advertising or your own imagery as well. But if I look at it on black and click here to deselect, I like to use a lot of radius, especially with a model that has flowing hair. So if I dial radius up, I'm instantly picking up all those fine pieces of hair just flying away in the background. Now what you do risk is I'm losing some of her arm. And this lighter black on her shoulder, the radius is so intelligent it tapers the opacity or the transparency at the edge. So I might be going too far with that, but if I look at it on black and white, you can really see I clicked up here to make the dialog go away. And if I zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus, you can really see every fine hair that this has picked up. So I can go back to, there we go, my screen was catching up with me. And I could use Spacebar to click and drag and move around and see every bit where it got every strand of hair. This is amazing. But I'll zoom back down with Command minus or Control minus, and I'm holding down Spacebar to give me the hand tool. You can zoom in and out with a lot of Photoshop's dialogs up. But let's go back to just on a black background. This is the most effective, I think, for this shot. And I'll click just on the title bar where the words Refine Edge are, or right or left of that, to see this setting go away. So I can back down radius a little bit, hoping to keep the also wiping out some of the white in between there. So if I get too much white, I dial it up. And if it's taking away too much hair, I dial it down. But there is a compromise in between. With this Refine Radius tool, I can dial my brush size down and paint away this white portion. So I'm clicking and holding, and this tool is automatically on when you bring up the dialog. It reevaluated it and did lighten that area. If I'm losing too much of her shoulder, I can switch to the Erase Refinements tool and make the brush size about as big as her shoulder. And it looks like I'm taking shoulder away, but when I let go, I'm really making it more solid or adding it back. So if I wheel down with my mouse, I could do the same with her arm, help protect it using Refine Edge. And it reevaluates all surrounding areas. With just that little change, I'm using spacebar to move. It's reevaluated the arm and where that lies, and it brings back a lot more than just the area I'm painting in. I try very carefully not to cross outside of her. Don't go outside the object, and you won't get too many halos outside the edge. So her hand is back. I'm using spacebar just to scoot around. I'll check the other hand but it really depends on where you're going to use this, how much you'll have to bring back. And I could switch to Refine Radius, the opposite, which should take more of this white away. And this one, I can actually cross over the edge, and Photoshop will reevaluate that. I'm going to let it go, because on this, I'm dropping her into a new background, and the opacity on this, I think, is OK. In fact, I could dial Radius up a little bit more, it would cut more away, but if I use Smart Radius, there's a checkbox here. This will attempt to keep more solid edges 
inside the shape you're selecting. And just to let my perfectionist kick in, I will come back and erase refinements on this part of her arm, and then I'll contract the whole selection so I don't get a glowing edge along her. So shift edge, I'll pull in just a little bit, and it looks like that edge may be a clear highlight. If it's not going away when I shift the edge, then I can't help it here, and I'll help it on a mask later. You can create a glow on her by shifting the edge into the positive and pulling in some of the white background, which actually isn't a bad effect for where she's landing. But I'll shift the edge just a little bit inside. I could try refine radius along this arm, now just crossing at the arm edge. And tell Photoshop to reevaluate that portion. If I fit in window, I think I'm happy with this. In fact, when I look at it on layers, you really don't see all of that peaking. But I know she's going to end up on a mask, so that peaking won't hurt me, especially where she's going to land. So when I'm finished, it doesn't matter what I leave this on. I could use on black one last time and do a little bit of smoothing, which just popped away that edge. Don't work too hard. Try all of the settings in the dialogue. I forget that sometimes. I play with smoothing and contrast to get a sharper edge, and it will help the edges in between and any pixel halos you may get. So if I dial smoothing back to zero and zoom in, there's a bit more of that halo. Dial up just a bit. Now it's gone. So I'm going to let this go, but before I finish, the last thing I want to show you is the show radius. This is the radius that's 62 pixels wide that Photoshop is evaluating in order to make up that edge. And you could see where I did my erase refinements. I controlled a little bit more of the object, and I could actually do more of that with erase refinements to make sure that this area stayed protected because it's inside the shape. So you can clean up in this view, and it will help Photoshop do a better job on the edge. But I'm going to turn off Show Radius, and let's take a look at where we came. I will turn on Show Original. That's what we started with. Turn it off, and usually I'm done with this dialog in anywhere from 30 seconds to 3 minutes, depending on how much cleanup I do. I really have to give myself a time limit, or I will just stay forever. To finish this off, we're going to output to a layer mask. She is on a locked background layer, but I want to cut out the background because I've put in a sunrise shot of Carmel that I want her standing in front of. So when I choose Output to Layer Mask and click OK, the background is gone. And just to be a good Photoshop user, I'll name this model. I will click the eye icon to turn on the Carmel sunrise, but I want her in front of the sunrise. So I'll drag the word model up, and there she is, standing in front of the Carmel sunrise. And when you get into layers and layer masks, you'll see how easy it is to paint away these areas. But I am really happy with how beautifully Refine Edge gets fine hairs and really helps something blend. So now we've composited an image, popping a model into a more interesting background, regardless of the background she was shot on. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of Refine Edge for people.